see any reason why we can't do that. And so I don't understand why we would need to wait because we know they work. So at least one. You know, this anyone who goes over there, they can see the problem. You know, so so one that that encourages you to not go so fast or you'll lose your muffler or some other part of your car would be good. Jennifer. Yeah, I just wanted to reiterate again what George said. We had long conversations in TSO, and this was the first recommendation that we could make that could yeah. be implemented. We talked about speed bumps, the flashing speed lights, even having declaring, having lights on that it throughout the school day that it's a school safety zone. Um, Gil Guilford could uh, speak to this, but speed bumps, there's a waiting list. I would, you know, I think we all agree if there are any place that should jump to the front of the line, it would be by the uh, preschool, but we couldn't come, I, if, again, Guilford, you can um, correct me if this isn't correct, if this isn't accurate, but we can't just come and say, we would like to see a, a speed bump on Henry Street, because I think there's, just in terms of the funding, it's like saying we want a pothole fixed on a particular street. It doesn't, it doesn't quite work that way. I know on the street I live on, which, it was a straight shot from Amity to UMass. It was the main entrance into the campus at that part in town. It took us 10 years to get speed bumps. Hopefully that can happen more quickly on Henry Street. Andy? Yeah, no, I think um, I'll just uh, support what uh, Jennifer said about what we discussed in the committee. The view was that um, there was a commitment, is a commitment from DPW to come back to us with options um, as recommended by the engineering report for um, traffic calming. Uh, but that is an option that's available. The one thing we can do right away is to declare a um, safety zone and uh, um, lower the speed limit and give us the authority to do then what else we can do within that zone so that um, this was a first step, not the only step. The other thing um, I wanna, uh, I apologize that I didn't catch the mistake in the motion, but the report that we provided when you read the sentence, it was very clear. Safety zone should include the length of Henry Street from the intersection with Market Hill Road to 300 feet beyond Pine Street. So when you read the our report, we were yeah. clear, and I apologize that I didn't catch the uh, um, discrepancy in the motion, and I appreciate everybody else pointing who pointed it out, so we got it straight. Okay, the mo uh, Pam. Could we just do another quick um, friendly amendment to exactly what Andy just said, and make the wording between Market Hill Road and to extend 300 feet beyond South or beyond Pine Street. I basically have already done that. I said between Market Hill Road and 300 feet south of Pine Street. Oh. Okay. Great. Any other questions or comments? Okay, then we're going to start with Kathy Shane. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Yes. Jennifer Toth. Yes. Councilor Walker. Yes. Patty Angelus. Aye. Anna Devon Gotham. Aye. Councillor Ette. Yes. Lynn Griesmers and I. Councillor Haneke. Aye. Bob Hegner. Yes. Councillor Lord. Aye. Pam Rooney. Yes. Councillor Ryan. Aye. Did I miss anybody? Nay. Okay. Nay. Okay. It's unanimous. Uh, we did the next item on consent. We're going to move to the motion postponed on January, on June 3rd uh, regarding the Jones Library building. I'm going to play, the motion is already on the floor. It's been seconded. And I uh, would like to just mention that since that motion um, was placed on the floor, there have been two subsequent actions. Um, one is the Mass Board of Library Commissioners voted unanimously to grant an extension of the deadline to sign a contract with a general contractor to the town of Amherst 
for its library construction project for the Jones Library to December 31st, 2024. And the second action that's been taken is the Jones Library trustees voted to approve Amendment 3, Memorandum of Agreement between the town manager and the Board of Library Trustees. And this is in your packet and specifically states that the library agrees to pay the cost of architectural fees currently estimated at $550,700 in order to rebid the project in fall 2024. This amount will be added to the library share of the project cost. Um, are we ready to vote? Kathy. So I made the motion. I'd like to speak to it. I, I believe Athena has the table of the proposed changes. The motion that I made was to recommend that the town manager not enter into a contract with the designer to make the changes. Um, so if I could get the list up, I just want everyone to be able to see what we're talking about. These are the changes that are, were under discussion and were voted on. I, I made this motion because the proposed cuts would reduce the building longevity, increase repair and operating costs, undermine the sustainability aspects of the building, strip the interior historic crafted wood features and shift costs to the town. And many of these would be irreversible. Without these changes, we could go out to bid soon. It took a long time to get the bidding papers in order, but they are in order now. So if we left it as is, it's, it's actually a decent design in many respects, the building design. I want to draw your attention to five of the proposed changes that I think um, reflect what I see as cuts. They're not value management, they're cuts. Um, the first is roofing. There's a proposed change in roofing to asphalt, both on historic Jones instead of long-lived slate-like, and on the new addition, metal. This, this type of roof only lasts 15 to 25 years. The facility manager for the Jones said this wasn't a good idea because we're going to have to repair it. The other thing is if we change to asphalt, the life of the asphalt is shorter than the life of solar panels. So if we ever wanted to leave solar panels on, it has an insufficient life expectancy to justify solar. Coon Riddle discovered this with the building they built. They had to tear the roof off and the solar panels to reinstall them. So it has a long lasting effect. Secondly, exterior, the proposed switch from brick to a type of cement that requires painting will add to maintenance costs. It will have to be repainted rather than brick, which is long lasting. Third, there were planned utility upgrades, meaning water and sewer out the back of the building. If you look at the wording on this one, these are needed. And that the hope is that someone else will pay for them. And I, I guess that would be the town. You usually do that when you demolish a building and build something new. And I think it might even be a permit requirement. So again, it's not a good idea to take them out. Fourth, single pane glass would be retained rather than replaced with double or triple pane glass. This wastes energy. It might not meet the new stretch energy code. Fifth, there's a destruction of the internal historic features by removing, this is line number seven, removing and throwing away crafted wood trim and paneling in historic Jones. It would be an irreversible loss. During the discussion of potential changes, the architect actually said there could be another path that would leave put in place, line eight, but she didn't give a specific estimate. So far, the decision was to remove and discard. This might jeopardize the NEH grant of a million dollars because there's a required federal section 106 review. The grant proposal from Jones actually assured NEH that historic preservation was, quote, an important component and it cited expected historic tax credits as evidence of this commitment. This is on page six of the grant proposal. Notably, at a recent Jones Committee meeting, the library director said credits are no longer expected. That was a $1.5 million source of funding for the project. So it would be a shame to get rid of them. Um, I did make a mistake when I wrote my Gazette article saying solar panels were being removed. 
What I didn't realize is they'd already been cut before we went out to bid. I was misled because the November documents we received when we voted for the project still had solar panels on it. And I heard during a meeting that in May that we could potentially reduce them. They're gone right now, except for the removal of gardens, which is the first few items. Most of the proposed changes are irreversible. This will mean the building is, will cost more to maintain, fail to preserve historic millwork, will no longer be net zero ready because of the roof, and it won't use green, low carbon, sustainable building materials. I think for $46 million or more, we should expect more. A building that will last for at least 50 to 100 years with materials chosen that way. We need to build well, not just uh, build with these cuts. The word value engineering in this case is a misnomer. There is a way of doing value engineering, but these are cuts. I really ask my colleagues to join with me to recommend that the town manager not sign the contract to pay for such design changes in the building. Are there any other comments? Uh, Councillor Haneke. The town's residents elected the Jones Library trustees to steward their endowment and their building. We as counselors were not elected to overstep and step into their authority. The charter gives all authority to sign contracts to the manager. The charter does not give the town council authority in contract signing. I truly believe this motion oversteps the delineation between our authority and the Jones Library Trustees Authority and the delineation between our authority and the manager's authority. I may not agree with what the Jones Library Trustees have voted to do. I'm not sure I do, frankly. I don't know whether it gives the project a high enough percentage of success. I still don't know. But I am was not elected to make those decisions. The Jones Library trustees were the ones elected to make those decisions. I already voted to authorize the borrowing. This vote here doesn't change anything related to that vote. In my mind, I read this motion and I feel like it would be a step too far in the separation of powers between the Trones Library trustees and the council, and the step too far in the separation of powers between the council and the manager. And for those reasons, I cannot vote for this motion. Pam Rooney. I have you in order. Thank you. Um, I thought it was Andy's turn. Um, I think we were, some of the items that Kathy mentioned on her list, um, there, there's yet another element that um, is to me looking very short-sighted and that is changing the curtain wall windows to store front windows. Um, a curtain wall term is a, a glass wall essentially, but it's an integral um, system that increases the, um, the R factor, it increases insulation, it increases the integrity of, of a glass front. Um, when you go to storefront windows, they're only good for eight to 10 feet, so you have a lot more building between each level of, of glass. And again, it's just, you know, visually is that, a, is that 
a huge difference? Maybe no, but but when we're talking about carving off all these pieces of what um, the sustainability elements were being proposed, I think we end up with a with a product that's very different than the one that um, I think most people voted on um, when the town came out for that referendum. So the whole the whole series of short term savings uh, to me does not add up to um, going ahead with the existing plan. If we're spending money, we're, we're we haven't even talked about the money that's being spent to go forward with redesign. Um, I would much rather see some of those dollars being spent on uh, put toward a repair project, but we haven't talked about that tonight. Andy. Well, first of all, uh, I agree with Saul and Mandy said, so I'm not going to repeat what, she's, what she previously said about the fact that I think we're, we would be seriously overstepping the role of the council versus another elected body. Um, but there's another thing that I've been struggling with all along with this, and that is everybody keeps talking about well, we can always go to repair, let's go to plan B. But um, I think that we, you know, people can go and, and pick apart anything, um, but it, we had Coon Riddle working off of uh, the plans of uh, Western Builder about what needed to be done. And I think that uh, when you really read take the time to read Coon Riddle's report, it really did go into explicit detail about what the sequence would have to be to get all of that work done and what is the most cost-effective way to do it and how much it would cost. And um, that, if nothing um, else, has inflated something, um, the town manager provided something earlier this year of a um, memo for, that sort of gave what that base um, increase would be. But I um, am concerned that ultimately we're going to be faced with a very difficult decision. And I think that what the um, trustees are suggesting that we should be thinking about too is that this will provide more information if we have to make that decision as to what our options really are as opposed to uh, what people off of uh, really the backs of envelopes pretty much are telling us what the options are. And I think that's not a responsible way to go about making a decision of this kind. Uh, finally, uh, if the town manager were comfortable doing so, I would appreciate hearing from him um, from his role with the uh, building committee about um, some of the uh, questions that have been raised by uh, Kathy. So, thank you. Paul, did you want to speak at, at this point or I'll go on to the next counselor. Yeah, I'd rather hear from the counselors. Thank you. Jennifer? Uh, yes, again, as with the uh, motion at the last meeting, this is a recommendation, and I think it's completely appropriate for counselors to express their opinion. Um, we, are, we were elected to be responsible uh, fiduciary managers of taxpayer funds, and although um, the trustees have said that they will borrow or they will take $550,700 from their endowment. When that was discussed at the uh, trustees meeting last week, the director said that that money would be paid back to the endowment as the capital campaign raises that money. So that just raised the goal of the capital campaign by $550,700. And that's money that if it doesn't come in. I mean, there's a lot of money they have to raise and contributions from individual donors has been, has not been robust. The fact that the 
trustees have to take this half a million dollars plus from the endowment suggests to me that they don't have the money, that they have not raised that yet, which is only a small piece of the capital campaign goal. So I'm concerned. I think that, and I realize this is getting um, it onto a discussion of the MOA, but that that fund, that, that money, it, since the town and the taxpayers will be taking out the loan for the full amount, that money falls, if that money, the entire capital campaign, that they don't reach their goal, plus this half a million dollars, that's the taxpayers who we were elected to be good fiduciary managers of their funds, that burden will fall on the town, will be left um, holding the bag, so to speak. Um, and I feel very strongly that we have never had a um, disinterested party um, put together a detailed and um, trustworthy analysis, but um, estimate of the cost of doing the repair work. And w the what I've heard at the trustees meeting and even um, at the last meeting when the town manager was speaking about going out to bid again and hoping to get closer to our budget is there's really no thought that by going out to bid again, even with the quote value engineering, that it's unlikely a bid is going to come in at 35.5 or so million dollars. And so they will be coming back to the council and asking us for an increased appropriation. And without having a really a reliable and trustworthy comparison and an estimate of repairs, I don't, I couldn't vote to um, in, increase in appropriation. And I just want to say that Bob Pam, the treasurer, I think it was the May 20th trustees meeting, he said, quote, a realistic work on the repair alternative required acknowledging that starting the project had a substantial risk of failing, so it has not been done. And I think it's past time that we have, again, a disinterested third party, not the not the entity that is committed to the expansion and demolition to prepare a current updated estimate or analysis of the cost of repairs. Because no matter how much the, the cost of the project increases, we're told that the town is not gonna have to spend more than $15.8 million. And there seems to be no limit as the price goes up, it's just said, well, the capital campaign will raise that much more. And I think in a town of 17,000, it were challenged to raise $14 million. And as the price increases, I think it becomes very unrealistic. We can meet that goal and we will be left paying more than $15.8 million. Councilor Ryan. I'd like to make three points. Um, first has to do with money. If this rebidding process fails, and let's be clear, it could very, it could fail. If this rebidding process fails, we will pay substantially more than the current 15.8 million just to repair the existing building. Any claims to the contrary are fantasy based on hand-waving and magical thinking. We do in fact have three separate estimates of what it would cost to do a repair only job. A 200 plus page report that details all the repair and design work that would be necessary to simply make this building functional for the next 15 to 20 years. That number is currently estimated to be north of $20 million. That's six to eight million more than the fixed town commitment to renovation and expansion. And those estimated numbers do not include asbestos abatement or the requirements of the newly adopted stretch code, nor do they factor in the cost of relocation of the library during the multiple phases of repair required, nor the escalation in costs for a repair option that at the current moment will stretch out over eight years and is estimated to be done in 2032. Second point. Some people have, current, have, have conveniently forgotten what, how this process began and why it began. It was about space and programming, not about, um, about the, the slate roof or asphalt roof, not about brick or siding, not about solar panels. It was about the need for the Jones to meet the demands of a 21st century library. 
that's where the trustees began over 10 years ago. So in all the talk you've been hearing, all the comments you've been getting from some of the naysayers, you won't hear a single word about the children's room and the need for space and a unified and welcoming space. You won't hear a single word about the teen space. You won't hear a single word about expanding and providing space for a dynamic ESL program. You're not going to hear a single word about a visible and accessible space for our priceless special collections. Nothing about a permanent and public home for our Civil War tablets. Nothing about a humanities center. Instead, what you hear about is a sudden, suddenly value engineering is a dirty word. Let's hope that the elementary school doesn't face that challenge. Third point, it's rich this evening that I was being schooled earlier on not overstepping my place and instructing the school committee on what they should or shouldn't do. And I heard that argument, and even though I have some grave reservations, I voted with the majority. And I trust that the school committee will do the right thing. But now apparently I'm supposed to go the other direction. I'm supposed to take the role of the trustees, elected public officials, and tell them what to do. They made the decision based on their vision for the Jones and its future as a 21st century library that the use of its endowment is a justified and reasonable risk. They have recognized that the town's contribution will not increase and that any additional cost to move this project forward must come from them. And so they have decided to pay the cost of revised architectural drawings with the hope, but with no certainty, that returning for a second round of bids will allow them to do what they believe is in the best interest of the Jones and the people it serves, most of whom don't send us email messages and aren't here tonight. That is their judgment as elected officials. If they had decided that this was not a risk worth taking, that given the financial realities and their fiduciary responsibilities, it would not be prudent to move forward, then this would be at an end. But it's not our call. Our call, and a very important one, centers on a very simple and basic question. Will this cost the town more money, and will it put us at an unreasonable financial risk? I take that question very seriously. And while I make no bones about my support for this project and my belief that it would bring extraordinary benefits to the town on so many important levels, not just for those of us today, but more importantly, for those of us who come after us, if the answer to that question were yes, and I would lead the chorus of naysayers saying we need to stop, but that's not the case. In the end, this effort may fail. The bids may remain prohibitively high and the project will be terminated, but it'll hardly be a day for rejoicing for anyone who cares about the town and its future, its cultural, social, and financial well-being. We will, in fact, end up spending far more money and getting very little in return. Councillor Walker. Um, thank you, Lynn. Uh, so I just also wanted to chime in that I, d I don't believe we're overstepping our authority here uh, because as a body, we are allowed to advise the town manager. Um, and so I think that that's what this motion is aiming to do. And I think where we do come into play in this project, because I do know a majority of it is the purview of the trustees, um, but there is a portion of the funding that is coming from the town and so when we are looking at the funding and considering how to use town money, it's important for us to consider the value of what we're spending our money on. So like what we are getting from our dollars. And it's a very, it is a very similar conversation to the one we just had about the track project. Um, we may not get to decide how the trustees move forward, but I think we do get to decide how we want to use our portion of the money, how much money we want to spend and what our portion is and what we're okay with spending that portion on. Um, Kathy's explanation was so comprehensive. And so I will just say that for me personally, this has been a project that I have felt has been fiscally irresponsible from the beginning. And I think my vote last week reflected that um, to Kathy's previous motion, which I know did not pass. Um, and so I am moving forward now with the understanding that we are still investing and may potentially add more money to this project. And so at this point, I would prefer for the project to remain as is. And as it was presented to the public with all of the sustainability measures, the public was promised. And while I don't know for certain that a repair 
option would be more um, inexpensive than a re the renovation and expansion. I think it's reasonable to think that that is possible. Should we be as creative about the composition of where we're finding our funding and monies to contribute to the project as we are for the renovation and expansion? We wouldn't be the only ones to have to contribute money to a plan B. But I don't think that this motion is about that. This is less about how to plan B. And this is more about how we're moving forward now. And we're just saying that when we go out to bid, because that is already the decision that has been made, that we want to go with the current documents that we have. Um, so I don't think that this, again, this motion is not about the plan B, really. It's saying we're looking at getting rid of all of the things that potentially, in my opinion, made this project worth the money we are going to put towards it. And is that the way that we want to move forward as a town? Councillor Ette. So earlier this evening, we had a uh, conversation about the track. And what I liked about that conversation was that we followed what we were supposed to be doing as a town council. One of the things we did was that we allowed room for flexibi flexibility. And that was in removing the restriction and leaving the school board to decide how that money was going to be used. There's no guarantee that it would be used in the way that we want, but at least there was a flexibility and a deference to that body. Something else was that there was room to think about alternatives. We knew what the alternatives were and we had a discussion about the alternatives. When we come to the Jones Library, we are not having that kind of conversation. And in the previous meeting, I mentioned that there was no basis for comparison that hasn't changed despite the 200 or so emails that I've gotten. As a sidebar, thanks to everyone who has been able to make their case one side or the other. But that being said, we still don't have the beads and we have not scrutinized how much the repairs will cost. Therefore, even if we believe that what we have right now is too expensive, there's no guarantee that the repairs won't be just as expensive as what we have right now. And that is only with regard to money. I want to speak about something else. What we've heard is that this motion is a recommendation. If it is a recommendation, we wouldn't, or at least I wouldn't, have been deluged with all the emails that I got. The emails were pushing for this particular motion to pass, not because it's a recommendation, but it's because it's considered as a way to stop the project. It's either one or the other. Now, if it stops the project, then we don't have flexibility because we will not go forward, but we will have to take an option where we don't know what the cost is. So I return back. We need that flexibility. We need that deference. And dare I say, I think it's a disservice to the town manager to just say that it is a recommendation. What we have in The charter is that the administration of all town fiscal, prudential, and municipal affairs will be vested in the executive branch headed by the town manager. A motion that restricts the manager from doing his job, I think, is a disservice to that office. It sets a bad precedent. I intend to vote no because nothing new has come since the last 
meeting, but I would implore the town council to vote no, because this would set a bad precedent with how it will restrict the town manager, not just the current one, but anyone going forward. Councillor Lord. <clears throat> Thank you. I was left with a lot of questions after our last meeting. So I scheduled, or I was blessed to have a tour of the Jones Library by Kent Farber and one of the trustees. Um, I saw what repairs would be needed. I saw the, uh, the dreams for the programming and the ADA accessibility. Um, and I got some of my questions answered, but I'm still left with some very important ones that I think our taxpayers need some clarity on um, and trying to do a deep dive through what meeting was this presented? Where's that piece of paper? Um, made me realize one day, maybe I would love to help create a centralized, oh, for topics of the track and field, here's a folder going back all those years, library. Cause I still don't have the answer and I've heard con, contrary information even here about does the town take out their loan? I've heard we're only on the hook for 15.8 million. And if that is true, then I think a lot of taxpayers don't realize that. And they think as the, the cost escalates, it's their tax dollars. But maybe it is true because maybe it is our loan. And if they default, we pay. So I still can't find those answers. I apologize to my constituents. I am really looking, I am asking, I'm doing the best I can. But I don't know that I can vote without those answers. And would there be hidden costs? Because right now it's the trustees are saying we're going to pay this extra money. It doesn't have to come out of the taxpayers' dollars. So to me, that sounds like why not give them the grace till December or whatever the date is. But maybe I am just not fiscally as aware of hidden costs or things that might still come out of our taxpayers' dollars. So. I'm left with more questions than answers. I hope to continue to dig, dig deep and get the answers so I can tell the people. I've, I've had more emails about this than anything since the ceasefire on my time here. So our town really feels super passionate about it. There's a lot of information out there that are contrary to the other information they're getting. So I hope we can find a way to help all of us understand what is really at stake. And I know there's other things about changing the building, about recommending, all of that stuff. I just have some basic questions about what it's gonna cost our taxpayers if they can't raise the money. So I just wanted to put that comment out there. I thank everybody who has contacted us and I thank everybody here for doing this wrestling with this. Anna. Uh, did Council Lord have questions that she wanted answers to now before I go? Are there are there specific ones that you wanted to try to pull out? 15.8. Is that all we will have to pay, period, no matter what? Paul? I think, sorry, Lynn, I guess you could call him Paul. Sorry. I was like, I'm, that is, that is a directed not at me question. I'm sorry, but Paul, I guess... The suggestion is that you answered the question about what will the town have to pay? So what the town council has voted is the full the full borrowing authorization. That was what your action was. Um, and then what the council said is under the funding program at 15.8 million was the town's share with the, with the rest coming with 15 point some million coming from the Mass Board of Library Commissioners and a promise by the trustees to make up that gap through private fundraising backstops by their endowment. So that's the, that's the, um, the plan. So, the, so we're limited by the council on how much we're allowed to borrow by, your, by the council's action. Can I, may I also add that this is exactly the same way the school works. We have to authorize the full borrowing and then we get reimbursed from the, in that case, the school building authority in this case, the um, board of library trust, board of library commissioners, and the endowment. So the town always has to uh, authorize the full amount. Um, Anna, you have your hand up. 
I do. All right. So my first is a rhetorical question. Um, what would a reliable and trustworthy estimate of repairs look like if folks do not think the one we currently have is reliable nor trustworthy? Uh, it was said that it couldn't be tied to a group, I'm paraphrasing, but couldn't be tied to a group who cares about the renovation, but that's the library and any estimates on repair costs are going to be worked, they're gonna be done in, in collaboration with the library. Um, I don't see why the repair estimates that we got wouldn't be taken seriously. I believe that they were completed by a reputable group and I I do trust them. It's also said for 46 million, we should expect more. Personally, I can't stand the value engineering that's on that list, but I didn't run to be on the library board of trustees. I ran for town, count, town, count, what did I run for? Town council. I'm so tired. Um, if their meetings don't run as late, maybe that's the next one. Um, as a counselor, I am a steward of taxpayer dollars. So for 46 million, we should expect more, but for our contribution, for what the town has to put in, which is different for the repair option, which is versus the renovation option, we should expect something. We are stewards of taxpayer dollars, not of endowment funding, not of private funding. I do not think that this motion gets us the updated numbers estimate that people seem to want, including me. I would take another one that wasn't escalation estimates. I think that if that's what people are hinging on, if that's what people need, that's the motion that should be made, not one that, in my opinion, goes against the charter. I'm looking at this in terms of what we're getting from our taxpayer dollars. It is absurd to me to spend more than that amount of money to repair a building that isn't serving the needs of our community. There is no remaining as is. As is, is broken. I received an email, one of the many, um, I'm sure that many of us did, saying, quote, we keep sending good money over difficult ideas. If your personal budget and future expenses were on the same course as the town, you would stop to think and take the time uh, to, to rethink. We're mortgaging the future of my children, of my children, of our children. Seriously tired. While I appreciate this constituent's concern for my personal budget, if my personal budget and future expenses were hinging on a plan, which while expensive is not increasing costs to my own budget more than I planned for, if it leverages external funding from others and brings needed changes to my life, in this case, that would be the current renovation expansion plan, versus a plan which changes nothing, is entirely funded by me and is in fact estimated to cost me more, I'm going to go for the one which improves my life and costs me less, no? And our children's future, what mortgages their future is to throw away that external funding, to spend more than we originally planned and to have nothing to show for it. Until the cost to repair is below the cost to renovate enough, and that would mean, and I am open to getting updated repair cost estimates, until it is below enough to justify the loss of that community space that we deserve, I will support continued progress. Kathy. Okay, I, I'd just like to point out this motion wasn't to stop the project. It was recommending that the town manager not sign a contract to implement these changes and basically asking him to be financially prudent with our dollars, financially responsible. We voted on a specific project when we voted $46 million in November. We had a set of specific designs and they were actually um, integrated. If you look at them, they made sense. They made sense in the sustainability side. They made sense with the various designs. It's got a little less daylight in. Um, so that was my intention, not not to stop the project. It was to keep those bidding documents. And by the way, they had to add about a thousand pages to the bidding documents to get them whole last time. Now we've got them. And Andy, this isn't new options. This has changed the bid, bidding documents, ask for something different from the construction. So I just wanted to make, it is asking Paul to be a prudent buyer and not opt for a short-term fix that will cost us down the road, not that long, 10 years, 15 years. If we want to spend that much on a building, it should last. We should be able to expect it to be a 100-year building. 
And then the final thing, Hala, your question on what are we on the hook for? The trustees are currently $7 million short of what they said they would raise. If they don't raise it, it's 15.8 plus 7 million because we are going out for the debt. Their endowment, it was held up as collateral and the treasurer had said that they could take out a loan against the endowment. It currently has $9 million in it. Uh, they can't easily take 7 million out of it without hurting the operating costs of the Every year, the library uses a draw on that endowment to support its operations. So 15.8 is what we're hoping for if the trustees can raise that amount of money. That's been the promise. And they did count on $1.5 million from historic tax credits for part of that seven, which with these changes, they're not going to get. So it is about money. Um, it's not about a repair option right now. And just on the repair side, no one's doing the math to say, why wouldn't the repair option get a million dollars from the Community Preservation Act if we're repairing historic Jones? Why wouldn't there be donations? So it's, what's the cost minus that would be the town share? We've never done that math. Um, I personally, when I went back and looked at the Western Builders original calculation that didn't have the ADA and didn't have the designer on top, they had a really good list of external repairs, of internal repairs, of HVAC wiring. It was a good list. So we can build on that and we can build on what we learned. So I don't think it's out of the question to do a good list. And it should be not what George described, a piece here, a piece there, but a list and do the whole thing at once, shut the building down and fix it. But my motion is not about a repair option. It's to stop making cuts now in the design of a building that was well-designed. We had a good architect working with the Jones, well-designed, allow it to go out to bid again and hope that it gets more bids next time and not make the short-sighted cuts. We could postpone the gardens when you look at the list. The gardens would save us some money and we could do them later. We can't redo the roof. We can't redo some of the other people's. These are irreversible. So the motion was only asked to recommend that the town manager be wise and be a prudent uh, financial agent on our behalf and honor what we all voted on a year ago. And I voted for this building, by the way. I voted in November to go forward. So I, knew, I had pictures in front of me and I had a list in front of me of what its content would be. These, these changes would no longer be that picture, would not be what I voted on. Jennifer. Yeah, again, I just wanted to, um, I think that the term that we, that the town authorizes the loan, we take out the loan, we're rep responsible for paying the entire amount uh, as well as the interest on that loan. So if the funds aren't raised, we, well, we are already contributing more than 15.8 million because we're paying the interest we're servicing the loan. I'm also concerned um, about uh, talking about those that have written letters to the council and submitted public comment as naysayers. I mean, we want to encourage the residents in town to write to the council. And we're all going to get receive emails, some we disagree with, some we agree with. But we want to encourage, you know, it's we have a participatory democracy. And if those who have concerns about this project are not naysayers. They are expressing their legitimate concerns about the project, as are those who are expressing support. So I would not I'm, want in a public meeting for, for the public and residents that are listening to think that we don't value their input and that we would consider those with whom we don't share an opinion as being naysayers and dismissing that input. We welcome all input from residents, um, whether throughout the town. Councilor Ate. Mm. It may come off as a recommendation 
but that's clearly not how a huge segment of the town feels about the motion. And this includes those who support an expansion and those who prefer repairs. And so I think I'm happy that we have made a clarification about the fact that this is a recommendation that the town manager be fiscally responsible. Now, that being said, it still sends the wrong message. The town manager throughout his time is going to be entering a lot of different agreements. And so to pick out one and request fiscal responsibility already undermines his credibility. Because if he declines, for example, to accept that recommendation, that might mean that he is fiscally irresponsible, in which case can he be trusted with further decisions regarding the town? So my position has less to do with the options that are available, but with the kind of signal that is sent when the executive that we have, in this case, the town manager, is giving a message that people can see and in which his decisions based, <clears throat> excuse me, based on that message can undermine his credibility in other areas of his work. Councillor Haneke. We just talked about a track project and approved $800,000 in borrowing from the CPA with a change in north-south orientation and got rid of that restriction. And not once did someone say, oh, that'll be more than $800,000 because there's interest attached to it. We never, when discussing the new school at the Fort River site and how much the town's share would be and the taxpayer's share would be with a debt exclusion, never once did we say, oh, it'll be more than 55 million because there's interest attached to it. But somehow, People believe this project is different as we talk about how much the town share is. In this project, and only this project, it seems, must we include the interest as a cost to the town? Not in the school project, not in any CPA borrowing, not in any other borrowing we've done for a fire truck, a ladder truck, or any of that. Just this one does interest come up as the town share is more than 16.15.8 million and it's it's your it's just disingenuous to make that argument for only one project when we talk about the costs to the town on all of our projects that are borrowing we talk about the amount we're borrowing not the amount we're borrowing plus interest if we did that with the school that cost would be well over 100 million dollars for the total cost of the project well over a hundred million dollars because we authorized borrowing of like 90 some million. The town share of that one is 55 million. We never discussed how much the interest would be on that. So I find it very disingenuous that every time it's only this project that people start saying, but the interest, as for the private fundraising, I think this is the fifth vote I'm facing on this project as a counselor in five and a half years. There were at least two votes I had as a town meeting member. It is not surprising. Well, frankly, let me raise it this way. It is extraordinary that the private fundraising is already at 9 million of the 14 million when we continue to face votes that put the viability of the project on the line. It is extraordinary that that much has been raised when the viability is continued to be questioned because it is extremely hard to raise significant amounts of money 
when a project remains in question. So to say, we don't think they can do it because they haven't yet done something when the project still remains in question is also disingenuous. Because when this project no longer remains in question, imagine what that fundraising can do when they've done more than 50% of it while this project remains in question. And as to the counselor's statement that this motion is not intended to stop the project, I appreciate the statement, but given all of the emails and the hundreds of emails we received that said, vote Shane's motion to stop the project, it's clear that, as Councillor Ette said, the town believes this motion will stop the project. And so I appreciate the counselor's statement that it's not intended that way, but in, eventual, in actuality, if this motion passes, the renovation expansion is likely stopped because I haven't heard anyone say that if the bid documents are not changed and we go out to bid with the same project, it has a high likelihood of coming in under the borrowing authorization already authorized. And I also haven't heard anyone say, oh, and if it comes in just slightly higher, the council will have nine votes to increase the borrowing. And so the actuality of this motion is, despite what the councilor has said, that this motion is intended to stop the project. And the people of this town believe that an outcome on this project is, uh, an outcome on this motion is either to go forward and attempt to continue the project or to stop the project. Pam Rooney. Thank you. Um, I, I want to circle back to recommendations that the council makes to the town manager. And I would, I would say that we make a number of recommendations uh, including our goals and sub-goals um, that we give to the town manager every year. We also encourage through vote to negotiate with our, with our institutions in town. And, and sometimes we're quite clear on what we expect from those negotiations. Um, I think this is totally, totally within our jurisdiction to uh, suggest um, a course of action that will show by a vote, which I would love to call, but I'm not going to. Um, but it'll show by our by our vote what uh, our feelings are about the course forward. And it's um, I hope that he can take a recommendation one way or the other. Councillor Walker. Um, yeah, I won't take too long, but I did just want to say speaking for myself and I, I have not ever actually particularly brought up the interest, although that, that is a concern of mine, but just in the comparison between this project and the school and track the track project for the school, we're talking about a f like about $4 million and about $50 million. So it's just a bigger project. And so I think that's why the interest makes it a little bit different. It's also just a different dynamic than the school building project with the MSBA because they are going to, like, we don't need there. And, and I'm not trying to disrespect the trustees. I understand that they've done a significant amount of work planning and fundraising. And I recognize and acknowledge and am grateful for that effort, but it is still not there yet right now as we're making this decision. And we don't have to question that ability with the MSBA. So it's just a different level of assurance that makes me uncomfortable with this project. Anna. I wanna go back and uh, try to be very clear in addressing one of Hollow's questions. Um, we are not the judges of how the library trustees choose to use their endowment. Well, endowments are not savings accounts on average when you look at them, 
the library trustees have authorized the use of theirs to function as one for this project. They put it up as collateral. That means they made the decision to make sure that they had a funding source for their part of these funds. That means they will pay that $7 million even if it comes from their endowment. So to answer Hala's question, well, so I'm so sorry, to answer Councillor Lord's question, while the town borrows the full amount, we have the commitment from the Jones Library trustees and they have a backstop to pay it if their fundraising doesn't get to where they want it to go. So no, I'm not concerned that the town will end up paying more than what we've committed to because we know that there's a backstop there. We know that they have that fund, those funds available to pay us to pay the town for this project if their fundraising does not uh, reach the level that they hope it will. I'm going to move to a vote. The motion that is on the table is to recommend that the town manager not enter into a new contract with an architect for additional expenses for new design work for the bidding phase of the project if the deadline is extended and there is a decision to rebid the project in the fall. That motion was made and seconded and then delayed from last week. The motion is advisory. If you vote yes, you support the motion recommending that the town manager not enter into a new contract with the architect for additional expenses for new design work for the bidding phase of the project. If you vote no, you do not support this motion. Andy Steinberg. No. Jennifer Taub. Yes. Councillor Walker. Yes. Pat DeAngelis. No. Anna Devlin Gothier. No. Councillor Ette. No. Lynn Griesmer is a no. Councillor Haneke. No. Bob Hegner. No. Councillor Lord. Abstain. Pam Rooney. Yes. Councillor Ryan. No. Kathy Shane. Yes. The vote fails. The motion is four in favor. Uh, it must be eight, eight against and one abstention. We have two other action items. We are going to postpone both of them until next week. One of those action items is the um, summer uh, schedule for the council. What I would like to ask is that all committee chairs and vice chairs and all committees for that matter, look at the item that's in your packet and see if there are additional things that need to be added, adjusted or changed. Basically the item in your packet lays out the basic meetings between now and the end of uh, December. Um, so please look that over carefully. Make sure you send me any changes and uh, include Athena in that so that by next week we have a much more accurate uh, idea in that uh, packet. Mandy Joe, Councillor Haneke, you have your hand up. Yeah, I had a question that I, I'm fine with postponing this till next week because I actually have questions, which is why I pulled it off. Um, but, but I thought I'd pose one because maybe we can give the town manager some time to answer it, which is one of the questions was, if we postpone that meeting, I know the manager has a backlog of town manager committee appointments, and I'm, I'm curious how losing, say, August 5th versus August 19th might affect that. I, I don't know where you stand and when we, we normally have like 30 different committees by now, and so I'm just curious what, what that is and does August 5th versus a different date over the summer have a substantial effect on on what's happening there because we just don't know where you are in that process so yeah. you can wait till next week but that's one of my questions okay um uh, the other thing that we're delaying is the appointment of the charter review committee uh that appointment uh, will be accompanied with a memo from the uh gol committee that brings us to liaison reports. Unless there's anything pressing, I would suggest you give those next week. There are hands up ones. 
Kathy? Yeah, Lynn, I just have an agenda question. Um, a week ago, uh, we had asked, Mandy and I had actually asked, and then you'd said potentially for next meeting, War Memorial Recreation Area plans. So if that can't be next week, can we have it in July before the plans are solidified? The idea was to have a discussion before the plans move forward. So I'm just look, it's a timing issue that the town staff not move forward till we have a chance to have a discussion about it. I have discussed this with the town manager and the clerk of the council. We've actually moved that item to next week. It will be on next week's agenda. Okay, thank you, because I didn't see it on as an idea for next week on your proposed. It, that, I might have missed it. Thanks. Thank you. Um, is there anything, uh, town manager's report at this point, questions of thought? If, yes. if I could just ask that any updates to that list of agenda items be sent by Tuesday. We have a holiday on Wednesday next Thank week. you very much for reminding us of that. I'm afraid I do have some things. I do want to mention it's going to be hot tomorrow, tonight, tomorrow, and the next four days. So we are opening cooling centers, so the public should know that our the bank center will be uh, uh, cooling centers. Uh, three libraries will be open during their normal hours, plus where our, the Mill River school, uh, pool will be open and free to the public on its normal hours. Um, Fire Chief Nelson's retirement reception is on Friday from 4 to 6 um, at the Courtyard Marriott. The program will begin at around 3.30, so, so there's prepare for a lot of people want to say a lot of things about our beloved fire chief um, and you're aware that uh, uh, that Lindsay Stromgren will be the temporary chief upon come uh, September um, July 1 and the um, our community, community communications manager uh, Samantha Giffen started today so you all get to meet her at some point Great. Um, a um, clarification I thought yeah. the program was four to six for Chief Nelson. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, at the I, courtyard, four, and you said 3:30, so I'm just qualifying the time. Four, meant Thanks, 4 Andy, Thank Joe. But, I'm going. Okay. To. Okay. We'll start at 3:30, but well, nobody will be there. The program is from four to six. We assume remarks will start at 4:30. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any other questions of the council of the town manager? Okay. On the agenda next week, I will send this out to you because things have gotten shifted. But in fact, we are going to be doing the budget adoption. We are having a discussion about War Memorial. We have to finalize the questions for the interviews with the trustees. And there will be some appointments by the town manager as well as the council. Um, at some point, we do need to go into executive session if, none, not, if for no other reason than to approve minutes. Are there any questions or comments? Oh, we had we had decided to move the executive session to approve minutes, and I think we have one other item for executive session to uh, July. Okay, thank you. Seeing no other hands, I'm going to make a motion to adjourn and seek a second. Second. Kathy. Just just a quick announcement on the elementary school building committee. We meet this Friday at 830. And this is probably the last meeting before the bid documents go out. So we're going to be hearing some final decisions and design issues. It's it, it'll be on Zoom. Thank you. Motion's been made to adjourn. I believe Pat DeAngelis, you seconded it. I'm going to quickly go through Jennifer Taub. Yes. Councillor Walker. Yes. Councillor Walker. She said yes. yes. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Anna Devon Gothier. Aye. Councillor Ette. Aye. Lynn Griesmerson. Aye. Councillor Haneke. Aye. Bob Hagner. Yes. Councillor Lord. Aye. Pam Rooney. Yes. Councillor Ryan. Aye. Kathy Shane. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Yes. The meeting's adjourned. <laughs>